Good morning and welcome to Teach Me Bees. I'm your host, Dave Westcott, and I've got with me this morning co-host, Scott the Beekeeper. Good, good morning, Scott. Good morning, good morning. How, How you are doing you today? Doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? You know, I'm I'm doing pretty solid. It's doing doing all right this morning. That's good. It's Thursday morning. It We're is. We're live on Teach Me Bees. My daughter had an ice skating lesson this morning. My wife woke up late. I had a dentist appointment this morning. It's pandemonium everywhere you go. It's been a morning for you then, huh? It's it's been a morning. And uh you know, the thing that uh as a professional bee company, one of the things I absolutely hate is wasps and yellow jackets. Yes. And I'm going to tell you what, I took a, a quick tour around the around the facility last night. They're they're starting, and I starting saw to come out. A lot of wasps nests. There's a big one on the backside of the uh, barn that's stuck up mm. in a light. Ooh, you know, they they wanted to keep warm so they yep. built their hat. but you know, for bees, for a beekeeper like these are bad. We yeah, these to, aren't these we aren't need good to news. exterminate. We need to exterminate these wasps. And there's one in the light post. I yeah, don't know if you I, whacked them out yet or not. Uh, we're going to. We are going They're to. They're on the mission. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if you filled their hive with expandable foam. I don't want to find out. I don't want to be the guy who sprays that. And then they all come but roaring out at me. What about if you put your bee suit on? They're bigger than bees. And so their stingers can go through the suit. So the suit's borderline useless compared to wasps it's i mean it'll it'll help but i think just a big thick jacket's gonna help more you know and you know at this point in the season um a couple last couple days it felt like spring was here and then today it doesn't feel like spring is here you know we're back to some cloudy and cold and uh so yeah, they they may not be coming out as frequently. I don't know right it's, now. It's but kind of depressing. If you are going to uh, attack some wasps, if you're going to bring the fight to the enemy, do it in the early morning or the late evening late when night. they're not active. That's right. That you do it when they're not active. You do it when they're That's active, right. and you are asking to get stung like 15 so, times. You know, I, we're talking about today. We're talking about good plants for bees, which yep. is an awesome thing to talk about. I love this. Um, but let me share one thing with you. Okay. And this is, you know, somebody made a complaint on the Teach Me Bees podcast about we're talking about Back to the Future. So if you're listening today, like, go Back to the Future. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but seriously, you know, we talk a lot about bees, but we also talk about some fun stuff, too. So, like, you know, we're human beings. We love bees. We talk about bees. We love honey. We love pollination. We love bees, but we're going to have a good time too. So if you're a bee snob, then maybe this show isn't right for you. You can hang up. Like it's not going to hurt my feelings. I love you. We're going to talk about bees. I love having you on the show. This is all about bees, but sometimes we're going to get off talking about and things and talk about some things that are fun yeah. too, because you know, we're not losers. We do like to have a good time. Was that bad to say? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to talk smack. I'm just trying to be real. Um, but listen, okay. So that we got to kill the wasps around the property because they're bad for our beehives. That's a good beekeeping topic for any of the haters out there. So you got to yep. make sure you go and, you know, kill your wasps. Now, here's the deal. Tell me. Home invasions and carjackings are through the roof. Right? It's just what's happening. You watch the news. It's a very scary time. You know, the... Uh, I was watching the news last night and there was something on there called Biden's bloodbath. And it was like all of these people who had been killed by illegal immigrants. Okay. As a father, these things Sheesh. freak me out. Right now. I'm not getting political on you. Although that's not this I, episode. I believe that we need to put borders on our country. I'm just going to throw that out there. But at the end of the day, Bad guy breaks into your house. You know what? I'm going to get those wasps. <laughs> if if you, you want to get the wasps, you want to sting them. That's when I they know. need to come I'm out, to man. I, I, I'm totally going off the rails here. But here's the deal. One of the best ways to stop an intruder or a bad guy, whether they're doing a carjacking. Carjackings are up like the statistic I saw. I don't know if it's true or not. was up 15% just in Everett. 
right? Home invasions are up something 15, 20%. I, I don't know if how accurate that is. This is the news. I don't know if it's fake. I don't know if it's real. All I know is that the statistics are all over the place and I'm, and I'm not claiming to be an expert in that. So, yeah. but what I know is this, if you take wasp or hornet spray, you can spray that can 30 feet. Okay. Psh, you hit the button. It can go up to 30 feet. Sheesh, and wow. I will tell you something that wasp and hornet spray is much more potent than pepper spray. So if a bad guy was to attack you or to attack your family or to attack you in the car and you don't have a gun or you don't have a weapon, you can always carry a can of bee spray, uh, hornet spray, wasp yeah. spray, and you can spray him in the face and the eyes and it'll put that guy down. From what I've been told, I've never done it to anybody. I'm not trying it on anybody. But what we're I'm not told, testing that it live is or anything. <laughs> you're not testing that live. Not on Scott, at least. Not on Scott, at least. You know, but Ralph? me neither. Me neither. I'm but here. But here's Please the deal. Don't. Like, there's a lot of bad things happening in our world. And I don't proclaim to be anything. I'm not trying to get anybody riled up on either side of the spectrum. But what I'm saying is that that crime seems to fe it feels like it seems to be at all time high. So I'm going to be honest with you. For years, even before we got into beekeeping, there's two cans of hornet spray right next to my bed. There's one above my bed, and Amy has two on her side. So if anybody were to come in, spray to the eyes, because it's bad. I also keep some in my truck. Would you, like, double fist it here, like... That was dope. Okay, but listen. I got he, your thumbnail, Scott, right there. Ex there we go. Exterminate the bad guys. And and exterminate the uh, the wasps and you know not to be offensive on political I'm not trying to do any of that I'm just sharing my own thoughts so they're mine mine own don't take it too far all right so um, any thought there you know I've been stung by wasps I think I shared the story but I got stung like five or six times bang 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 and that stuff sucks so. I don't have remorse for killing the wasp, whether it's via spray or a trap or, you know, another way. So if you're going to use a nice old self-defense tool, I think a wasp killer spray is as good as anything, you know? So good. go for it. And I'm glad we have your blessing. You know what? We're transitioning now into plant talk. Yeah, we are. I noticed you trimmed up the beard. You know, that was actually my wife's doing. She was like, I really want to even out your beard. And so we went down, and she enjoys it. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> she trimmed up the beard. The things you do for love. For... The beard looks really nice, actually. Thanks. I'll let her know you said that. She did, a real, she did a really nice job. Yep. She left the goatee a little bit more pronounced. Yep. She thinned up the sides. If you're uh, curious, if you're listening, go check out a YouTube or Facebook, and you could see the the whole beard here. Shout out to my wife Selena, and uh, yeah, we did that. So hey, way to go, Selena! Now, now just get a couple of cans of bee spray. I mean, hornet spray, and put them next to your bed. And if a bad guy comes in, the way we our room is situated is. I am the first line of defense if something were to happen. Technically, our cat would be, but our cat's not doing nothing. So. First line of defense. Do you have a weapon? I have things, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna publicize them on the podcast. But I have I have tools at my disposal. So you're ready for some sort of zombie apocalypse? Not as ready as some people, but ready-ish. I'm a doomsday prepper. Anyone out there? Is that surprising or not surprising? <laughs> It's Would why you, we have bees, man. We can make our own honey. Yeah, you know, you won't. Have, you don't have to leave the property, man. You just the the bees. One, you get honey. Two, I don't think anyone's gonna come and try and mess with you. They're like, uh, yeah, that's like a million bees. I'm done. I'm out. Hey, you know? and listen, it's very exciting news. Our third dog, a new Doberman, Your new is one joining coming. the family. Oh, April eighth, we are supposed to have another doberman so now we have two dobermans and the killer german shepherd <laughs> so it's yeah, like, i wish she know. i wish she liked me a little bit more <laughs> she doesn't like me too much she's but... a wild creature man she's she a wild is. all right 
just Listen, like the bees. Uh, we are getting a lot of haters on the phone. So, why are you talking about the bees? You know, I don't need to talk about the bees. <laughs> right, let's get some bee talk going on here. All right, so um, it's kind of the time of the year when we really need to be considering thinking about pollination for our bees, right? Um, and hopefully, we've been feeding them coming out of winter into spring, making sure yeah, they're staying alive. Hopefully, you didn't kill your bees. You know, that's that's good. Not you know, not every hive is going to make it, but. Hopefully you're you're feeding them, and so today we wanted to bring up some plants that um, you could plant if you're a backyard beekeeper, you know, with however much space you have, or if you just want to save the bees. If you are someone who wants to, yeah, save the bees, wants to just kind of participate in pollination, or maybe you're someone that has, you know, just an acre or or you know more than. Um, you know, a backyard beekeeper could have, and you want to plant stuff, and maybe you have bees, maybe you don't. I don't know. So we're gonna run through some even plants, some good pollination. Are good. Yeah. You know, even like if you love flower pots for the Fourth of July, you know, plant flowers. Yeah. Plant flowers at the entry of your home. Plant flowers in the flower beds. You know, plant, plant, plant. If you really want to save the bees, plant flowers. <laughs> you know, so. So we're gonna we've got a list here of some of the you know. Good things and, to plant. Good plants for bees is what we're calling it. Yeah, specifically geared towards the, the Pacific Northwest and even more so on the western side of the mountains. So if you're on the eastern side of the mountains, you might have a little bit of a different variety of yeah. things you could plant, just because your climate's a little bit different. Um, and this, you know, this can also be uh, in Oregon and, and whatnot. You know, it's the this side of the mountain areas in Idaho. I mean, you've got but, you a lot of these, these are, are gonna, gonna a these lot are gonna of hit. these are gonna are a lot of these are gonna cross over for sure. You know, a lot of these are gonna be, you know, good and um and a lot of them are gonna be good too on the east coast. You know, the yeah. the issue you might have with some of these is in some of the desert states. So you know the the very warmer temperatures. If you're in but, the middle of the desert. You might wanna. But you can also water, right? You you can also make sure you water yeah. and you can do some different things. But so March. Uh, the maple, the tree or the shrub, yep, um, the Indian plume one. tree, the willow, the Oregon grape. I actually love the Oregon grape. So out of March, yeah, my favorite one here is actually the Oregon grape. I love the Oregon grape. One, if you do have large landscape areas, it's really nice to have some mounded bark, maybe some boulders, and then you know run with some Oregon grape as a nice ground cover. Okay. Mm. Um, I also like the Vinca Minor, which has a nice purple flower on it, which is also good for pollinating. Um, but the Oregon grape is nice because it gets nice and thick and it covers up the ground and it reduces weed count, you know, it, and it keeps the, the area looking very native. And having mm. a native landscape is really a nice thing. So the Oregon grape is absolutely one of my favorites and it's a native pollinator so it's yep. really going to help your bees it's really going to help them get what they need bees need to be pollinating right because that's what they're going to take back to their hive that's how they're going to make their gonna honey feed. they're going to feed themselves you know scott yeah. the beekeeper knows things that i don't know and i know things that scott the beekeeper that's doesn't right. know that's you, why we're you know a good more team. about plants than i do you know because of your landscaping background yes you know? i love i love gardening you're a gardener at heart. I'm a gardener and I'm a beekeeper. If I was at Universal Studios, I'd be a double stamp assassin. Right? A gardener and mm. a beekeeper. See the movie? They, oh, God, talking about movies. Someone someone just quit the podcast. I actually Son haven't seen gun. the beekeeper yet. But I, I haven't need to. either. You but know, it's about an I, assassin. I actually turned down the lead role. I said, you know what? Give that one to Jason Statham. I think he's got more time than I do yeah, right now. It, it was the beard, right? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, because the beard looks good. I'm going to be honest with you. You look great today. They wanted to... I'm not hitting on you or anything. I'm just saying, you know, the beard looks really nice. She did Thank a nice you. job. Thank you. Um, but, okay, so April, peaches. I love peaches. Yes. Peaches, I love apples. Pears for me are okay. I love... Yeah, yeah. I love cherries. Rosemary yep. is great for... You know, cooking and makes it makes me think of spaghetti. It smells, it smells great. It does. It makes me think oh. of spaghetti. I don't know why. Um, Pacific dogwoods. I love the dogwoods. The way that they flower up. You know, there's lots of little flowers come up. Dogwoods are so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and currant 
is a native pollinator. So like in April, as you're thinking, you don't have to go out and like plant these things specifically in these months, but these are when they're going to be in pollination. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and even like some of these are going to bleed into other months as well, but yeah, like depending maybe on the cold you might have and a, a peak bloom in this time or, um, or even it might be good to, to get them in the ground, you know, right before this time, you know, think yeah. about, like think of it like that perhaps. Um, you can't go wrong with with fruit trees in general for bees and then you also you know you get the fruit the fruit of your labor you can make some good pies you could sell it you could just eat it off the ground i guess whatever floats your boat you know yeah i love you know as um as a dad with a few little ones one of one of my favorite things to do with the little ones so at our at the old place that we used to live you know i had really curated the most beautiful garden it actually was stunning just thinking about it makes me want to go back there sometimes mm. but it was just absolutely beautiful and um gosh i love that place but regardless of that i had multiple plum trees mm. plum and one nice. of my favorite things in the world to do with my daughter was we would go out at night and we would just pick plums and we'd pick plums and we'd pick plums and we go out and we check the plums, the plums ready. We could eat 15, 20 plums a night and we just hang out. It's a lot of the plums. Tree. It's a lot of plums, but you know what? They're good. Wait, 15, 20 between the two of you or each? Between the two of us. Okay. I was thinking each. I was like, wow. 20 plums. 20 <laughs> plums for a, for a two year old knocking it down. <laughs> I know. I was <laughs> That's like, going to have some wow. serious blowouts of a different kind. Um, you know, but um, um, Ralph knows all about that. Sadly, it's yes. the father life. Yes, the so father the life. life. The father, not yet yeah. there. Um, are you working on it? We're not working on that right now. No, we're not. That's not a goal at the moment. So you're a man out of practice. Or a man that's not trying to have children at the moment. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Yep. We're not going to dig too we'll move, deep into we'll Scott the Beekeeper's pollination practices. <laughs> we're going to move forward. <laughs> Plant, yeah, so plant those those uh, those trees in May. Uh, you can definitely plant some clovers, raspberries. Selena, I'm so sorry. You know, it's just the humor that we have on this show. It's it's, it's the one bond of a kind that Scott and I have it's together. It's a one of a kind. It's, just, it's a we have such a great time. I'm, one of a kind. I want you. To, I want to let you know that Scott the Beekeeper. I love you, man. I think yeah, I appreciate you're a good that. Guy. You're a I good appreciate guy. that. All right. Um, blueberries, you could definitely plant those earlier and, and but they're going to bloom April, May. Um, so we can put them in May. I love blueberries. And, um, these are, I had some for breakfast today, actually. You know, the thing is I mm. love about blueberries is I actually love going out and having lunch in the blueberry patch. Yeah. So like you pick, you know, you got to do a couple hundred blueberries, maybe, you know, but I, I love, I love that because see, these things are so fun. Not only are they amazing for the bees you know because that's what this is really about this is about providing great pollination for the bees but you also reap a huge benefit like fresh blueberries for sure off the vine are so scrumptious raspberries you've seen our raspberry patch yeah that thing is a monster raspberries are so good raspberries are so good and you know what i'll tell you this you go over to the raspberry patch we have each row is about 20 feet long and there's roughly, and there's about eight rows, maybe seven. But it, when you go over there in the, in the summertime, you can hear it hum. I mean, mm. it is literally, mm, I'm doing a lot of sound effects today. Um, <laughs> but um, but it's, it's really, it's humming. But you know, when you actually look at it, it's not to be afraid because the kids get scared. But what you see is there's actually a lot of honeybees in there and you can actually walk through it and you can pick and eat and enjoy. And we make a lot of pies from it. We actually do make pies from these, which also teaches the kids baking and having yeah, fun it's really cool. and, you know, self-sustaining gardens. Really cool. But it's amazing because you, it is like alive with bees. Mm. Have you been in there? Have you gone in? I, don't, I haven't really been in there. No. I've this been this doing summer, other stuff, this yeah, summer. this summer, um, blackberries, 
They're pretty much May, June, July. They're just going to be... I love blackberries. Popping off. Now, some people consider blackberries a nuisance. I think they can be in, in some settings. Like, if they, if you don't prune them at all, you, you just kind of let them do their thing, they can definitely get out of control. But they're a great pollinator. They're, they are a great pollinator. They are a great pollinator. And I think they taste pretty stinking good. I love them, too. They'd be a great pie as well. Blackberry pie. Blackberry pie is Ooh. good. Man, we had a so great, good. We had a great I'm a blackberry pie guy patch. Heart, just so I, you know, know, I'm a pie guy too. Over let's take a all quick, day. Let's take a quick pie break and discuss what is our favorite pie. My favorite pie in the whole wide world okay. is key lime pie. Really? That is not high for me. Have you ever had a key lime I pie? I have a couple times. Where? At like, I don't know, some special event. It's just like they brought around key lime pie. I was like, all right, fine, I'll eat it. It's a pie. You know? Not every key lime pie is amazing. Okay. Maybe I haven't had a good but one. When you have an incredible key lime pie. Change your life. Apparently. It's good. For me? Yep. I think I would go with a Marionberry pie. You would love my mother in law. She loves Marionberry. Marionberry pie is so good. I and also, down down okay. in Oregon, growing up in the Willamette Valley, that is something that they have locked down. Marionberry pies. Whew. So I love pies. I love getting pies. Mary yeah, Mary Berry pie is a good pie. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Ralph, favorite pie? I'm with you. Key lime. It's Key always lime. been my favorite. My man. And uh, down in Florida, especially yes, yeah. restaurants Outnumbered. there, because they Outnumbered. get those fresh limes. Oh. Yeah, it's it's about the right place for the. Key you know, lime. if if you're if you're watching this, feel free to drop a comment. What is your favorite pie? We would That's love right. to know. That's right, and um. But, and so thank you for, and also maybe drop a line and what's your favorite pollinator? I know I've yeah. talked smack about some of them, our audience talking smack, but you know, what, what do you like to plant? What do you, what is your, your favorite to, to watch the bees come and pollinate and maybe reap the rewards from? So yeah, yeah I, um, we're gonna, what we're I like keep to moving do on here, what I like to do yeah, is I like to take an old bathtub not a new one. I like nope, not a new one. Okay. <laughs> like just so that it's clear, it's old <laughs> and well used. Uh I like to <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> you know, I went somewhere pretty dark and devious for a second and then I brought myself back. Well, you're like this uh, is the PG show. But I could do an R-rated show. Not I... this one. <laughs> I love the Lord with all my heart, but I could do an R-rated show. I'm just going to tell you, that part of me lives in there somewhere. Yeah. It's very deep down. Okay, listen, we're getting so off topic. I'm losing listeners by the second. So (laughs) I like to take a bathtub, and then what I like to do is get some boiling hot water, fill it with boiling hot water, and then I like to dump out 20 pounds of sugar in there, and I like to stir that up. And you'll be amazed at what you see because you'll actually see... Thousands of bees just land right on that bathtub, and it's like so a bee sanctuary. The bathtub's outdoors. Then. Yes. Okay. This is not inside the house. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Good clarification Absolutely. here. I was Absolutely. thinking like, okay, we got an old tub in the house. Okay. Uh, we're gonna keep moving. Keep moving through the summer months here, into June. Uh, in oregano, mints. Oh man, I love a good wait, mint. Wait, wait, in the wait. What about strawberries, man? Sorry, I didn't mean to gloss over the strawberries. The strawberry is an amazing ground cover. They taste good. The strawberry is an awesome ground cover for your garden. And it's got a pretty little white flower on it. You know, I think strawberry and maybe a green grape, the most refreshing fruits when I just need a good fruit. Those are what I go to. I love a strawberry. I also love a strawberry rhubarb pie. Okay. I respect it. I respect that. All right. June oregano mint huckleberry huckleberry is good huckleberry is very very good in some places you know they, I mean, they I'm have, like hungry right now they What's have going more on? of what we're talking about you know um like I don't think yep. we're known for huckleberries per se but um it is a native pollinator to the northwest and it's it's very good um clover honeysuckle, clover, honeysuckle, honeysuckle those both, are really good, good really good pollinators um July cucumber. Yeah. Not one of my faves. Yeah, I, you come, 
cucumber water is nice. You know, I don't, I don't mind cucumber. There's certain vegetables I stay away from. Cucumber is one of them. Is one of them. Okay, I'm indifferent. You know, borage, mint. La- I love lavender. Lavender is beautiful. Lavender honey's good. Lavender is it smells amazing. good. It's looks amazing. good. It's pretty much every everything you need. Other than I guess, it doesn't like produce a barrier for you to eat. I guess, but and uh, and everything else, it's awesome. But you know what? I have a, I've got a, I got a home, and I did a lot of lavender planting. Yeah. And this year with the freezing cold, I lost like twenty lavender plants. Mm. Some of these lavender plants were like five years old. They were enormous. Oh, that's so a bummer, disappointing. Man. It really was. And um, but I'll tell you that it's that same thing when you go to the lavender plant. It is just literally, and it's not just honeybees. It's there's tons of bumblebees and there's you know bumblebees are pollinators too. Yeah. So you know much smaller colonies, um, but yes, very good pollinators. But good pollinators, and so like the lavender is just covered, mm. just covered with bees. But the nice thing about lavender is you know you can go in and you can grab some of the granules. <laughs> Excuse me. And you can rub them on your hands and, you know, just the smell and just everything with lavender is just so, so wonderful. So, um, and then we've got Russian Russian sage and some buckwheat. And I also love salile. I didn't see salile on there, but, yeah, you know, I this love This is not a salile. full comprehensive list. It's just a highlighted of some of the maybe more well, well-known well or edible ones. Yeah, this is a, no, this is a great list. So in September, we've got sunflowers, okay? And I love the sunflower. Do you know that there's like, I'm just going to guess, but there's about a hundred different varieties of sunflowers. For real? Yeah. Wow. So I'll, I'll tell you a cool story that really helps support the bees. And this was awesome for bees. And listen, I have an idea about putting about 25 hives on the peninsula. Okay. I think it's going to be amazing. All right. So Let's do it. I have a second bee farm idea going in my head that's been going there for about a week so one of the things that we did was we had an area that was about the size of a football field okay and we cut down a bunch of trees and you know we we had to do them it was invasive and so we we put a bunch of wood chips down we covered the whole area with wood chips and we used recycled wood chips from the trees that we cut down Mm. They were getting invasive, going to fall on a house, getting in the septic lines, that sort of thing. Otherwise, I don't like cutting down trees. But what we did was we actually, we went up to the local coastal, okay. which is a store. Yep. And they've got a section of seeds. And we probably spent $300. I don't know. We went freaking crazy. It was just insane on sunflowers. And what we did was each one of these little packages, they're like 19 cents. So that tells you how many seeds we bought. I mean, it was nuts. I don't know why I did it. It's an impulsive buy. But but what we did was, you know, each one of these little packages has three or four seeds in it. And it's like a hundred thousand seeds. Dude, it was crazy. I mean, it took all day. Like we were literally out there with bags just throwing these seeds around, you know. But I'll tell you what produced was some of the craziest looking sunflowers you have ever seen like red and black and some were little flowers and just and they would all be blooming at like different times and some were like the the standard you know sunflower that you see with the black center and the yellow rim mm. and I'll tell you what that area was alive with pollinators there was thousands and thousands of bees I don't even know where all these bees came from yeah and it was one of the most beautiful things because they were all random. It was like you'd have a big one, a little one, and 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 they just whoom, 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 popped up. And the area was actually over a septic field, so it was constantly watered. And you know, maybe the water is a little murky, but that's good for you know uh, growing plants. But I'll tell you what: one, it was absolutely stu- one of the coolest things I've ever done from a stunning standpoint. Yeah. Look beautiful. And then two, from a pollination standpoint, I can't think of a better thing that I actually did for the bees. So when it comes to saving the bees, like that was one of the best things I ever did. Yeah, you helped contribute to the pollination. It it was amazing, man. It was amazing. And, you know, before you become a beekeeper, you get kind of scared with the bees because the buzzing. But once you 
understand bees and you understand that honeybees and bumblebees are not going to hurt you. They're just to pollinate. You can actually really sit there and you can enjoy it. And it's like therapy. It's very calming. You look at the beautiful flowers. You have a cup of coffee. You sit out in the middle. You watch them buzz and go and maneuver around. And it's just an amazingly yeah. peaceful time. So not only is it good for your soul and you, it's good for the bees and the pollination. And it's absolutely beautiful. And then the kids love it and it teaches them how cool pollination is. So that's what I've got for you. Mm. It's really good. And we walked through quite the list of plants here again, yep. um, specifically towards Western Washington, this side of the mountains and, and everything. Um, here at, at our bee yard, we've recently planted some more uh, uh, fruit trees, fruit trees, apples, pears, peaches, peaches, pears. And um, we've got a huge plums. row of blueberries set to go in. Yep. And so we're just having our own built-in pollination. And, you know, we we do take our bees to, to other places, other farms that are maybe more specific to one thing, like a blueberry or an apple <laughs> or whatever. And, and we do pollination there. Um, so if you're interested in that, you're listening, feel free to to send an email, scott at honeyforhope.org. Hit us up. Um, but we, we love to have our own built-in pollination. So our bees are healthy. Um, so our honey has different varieties. And so we're super excited for this season and what we have going on. You know, and if, if you're someone who's got maybe just a hive or two or three, you know, think through what you want to plant maybe at your house. But also know that the, the honeybee is going to fly around a mile in just normal routine pollination. So think about what's within a mile or so um, of your house and of your bee yard and know what's there and then plant a, a different variety to kind of help balance it Absolutely. out, you know? And so uh, we hope you feel encouraged about pollination, maybe have some new inspiration for what to plant, when to have it, um, just have a healthy variety for your honeybees. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope you got a few laughs out of it. I hope that you had a good time listening. Yeah. If you have any suggestions or comments, drop them in the box. We absolutely love your participation. Love hanging out. Yeah. Comment um, on the videos. And, uh, yeah. Give us, you know, give us a like, give us a share. Follow me on LinkedIn. I'm Dave Westcott. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Anywhere we're at social, we're hanging out. Check out what we're doing for Honey for Hope. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.